Here's the new lecture slide on um, current electricity and just the continuation of electricity, you know. So in, on this lecture, we're going to talk about electrical circuits. Uh, we're going to deal with uh, very fundamental, you know, uh, fundamental uh, laws uh, <clears throat> in circuits. Uh, so first, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, the series and parallel combination of registers. And a very important law in circuits, um, you know, uh, called Kirchhoff's law, you know. And then series and parallel combination of capacitors. And uh, finally, the register and capacitor circuits. Uh, it's called charging and discharging of capacitor. And before we get started, so do you guys know that the modern, you know, Intel processor or any chip uh, processor, you know, um, has uh, billions of transistors, you know, fabricated inside it? You can't see those transistors, you know, uh, uh, with your eyes. You need a microscope. Um, so there are billions of transistors. So transistors just act as, you know, turn uh, on and off switches, which form a logic gates. So the modern circuitry, you know, modern electronics has become very advanced, actually. But here we're just going to study some fundamental aspects of circuits. So first of all, now uh, here's an example of you know uh, circuit example to measure the current and voltage through any sample it's also called ohm's law you know we we have we, we use this this circuit you know um to measure the current and voltage across a sample uh, and then uh, use it to study how current increases with voltage something like that it's called ohm's law uh, so and uh, this you know messy circuit can be just replaced by this simple and very clean uh, diagram and we call circuit diagram because this will significantly um, you know improve the understanding uh, of the basic uh, laws of you know circuits if you just draw a circuit like that so this all everything here can be just uh, written as this so you have a battery which is a power supply and you have a sample which is register connected in series with the uh, emitter and the voltmeter is just connected across the sample which is a register here so this whole thing can be, so this is called circuit diagram, you know. So circuit diagram will significantly simplify to understand the, you know, electrical circuits. Uh, so similarly, uh, this whole thing, this is the actual diagram, right, that you would do in the lab. So you have a capacitor, you have a resistor and a battery here. And this can be, you know, written, you know, so, so this is the circuit diagram, right, the actual electrical simplified circuit diagram for that. Um, so these are some standard symbols, um, you know, uh, for all the uh, components in electrical circuits. So battery, this is the actual picture of the battery, and the battery symbol is this. And the wire is just the straight line register. This is the register symbol um, you will often see. And this is the electrical bulb. This is a wire junction, and the capacitor is just the parallel plate, you know, capacitor. And this is the switch uh, to turn the circuit on and off. So these are some standard circuits uh, components, you know, that you will see. Uh, so uh, before we get started with any simple or complex circuit, the first, very first law you should know is Kirchhoff's law, and it has two main laws actually. The first law is called Kirchhoff's, you know, um, current law, law, current rule for Kirchhoff's law. It simply says at any junction right so here's, here's a simple example you have a, a, a three currents a current i1 and I, i1 is coming to the junction and i2 and i3 are going out of the junction right at any junction like this uh, it says the total current entering the junction must be equal to total current leaving the junction right that's what kirchhoff's uh, current law says it's also called kcl in short is also called kcl kirchhoff's current law it simply says the total current, uh, you know, mm, uh, entering the junction must be equal to total current um, leaving the junction. The current should not, uh, you know, our charges should not accumulate, you know, at any junction. So the next important law is second law is called Kirchhoff's um, uh, voltage law, also called loop law. And Kirchhoff's loop law simply says, so, so for example here, uh, I'm just giving you some any random example. If you have a any loop, you know, of electrical circuits like that. So around this loop, it says the sum of the voltage around this loop has to be zero. 
okay this is just like uh, if you uh, raise any mass right and uh, and if you drop this mass mass it comes back to the ground and the total potential energy change will be zero right now just like that by analogy you know uh, in any electrical circuit any around the, any loop electrical loop the sum of the potential difference the delta v is the uh, potential difference the sum of the potential difference uh, around any loop has to be zero okay so that's what kirchhoff's voltage loss is and and when so you, you're going to learn actually what actually means when you actually apply to solve the problems here is how uh, you use um, the Kirchhoff's law uh, in actual circuits so these are some rules that you have to you know understand so when do you choose the battery voltage positive uh, or negative and when do you choose uh, you know uh, the voltage across the uh, registers positive and negative so these are the rules if your loop if you are going from negative to positive say if you choose a loop right using Kirchhoff's law if you if you go from negative to positive then obviously electric potential increases right you go, because you are going from lower to higher potential then the battery voltage is positive in that case similarly if you if your loop current right that you choose uh, if if you're going from positive to negative so you're going from higher to lower potential right so then you choose the battery voltage in that case negative and similarly uh, in the uh, voltage across the register when you go from current always flows uh, from positive to negative side right across the register so if you, if the loop you loop current you choose if you go from positive to negative side right like this uh, the um, voltage uh, the potential difference across the uh, register is negative because you're going from positive to negative so that's the summary actually that's the rule actually that you have to understand if you if the if your loop current you choose goes from um you know negative to positive that voltage that particular voltage is positive if you go from positive to negative that particular voltage or potential difference is negative so uh, the first thing is uh, combination of uh, registers so let's begin with combination of registers you can combine the registers uh, not only registers capacitor or any components in two ways actually basically series combination and parallel combinations series this is the series combination process so if you have two registers say r1 and r2 right and if you combine them in series like this and uh, <clears throat> And if you connect it to the battery, this is the symbol for a battery, right? Uh, you have a conventional current, so we, we always use conventional current, which goes from positive to negative, right? So what it, our job is to find out what's the equivalent, what's the total resistance, to, what's the effective total resistance, right, of this combination. Uh, so and we're gonna find out uh, the next um, slide. So we're going to derive uh, the equivalent resistance uh, formula for series combinations. So um, you have the battery, right? And you connect two registers in series, something like that. So here's an example of two registers in series. So say let's say R1 and R2 are in series. So our job is to find out what's the equivalent or what's the total equivalent resistance of these two registers. So let's say the battery has uh, the voltage uh, which we call EMF right let's say E and um, as the, you complete the circuit like that right <clears throat> uh, current flows so we are always going to show the conventional current like this and then so this side becomes uh, since current flows like this right in this way this side becomes positive this side of the register becomes similarly for the second register this side becomes positive and negative right and then we just we, you can just apply the Kirchhoff's law right Mm, so Kirchhoff's law simply says um, the total voltage around this loop, right? Uh, any electrical loop has to be zero. The sum of the voltage around any loop has to be zero. So here, uh, E, right, um, uh, plus V1 plus V2 has to be equal to zero. So the voltage of the battery, voltage across the register R1 and voltage across the register R2 has to be zero. But Choosing plus and minus is important. So you're here uh, for the battery, right? You're going from negative to positive, right? So this is our loop. We're, we're doing actually clockwise loop. 
so uh, so so for the battery you are stepping up actually so you're going from negative to positive so the battery voltage is considered positive but here when you come down to the register you're going from positive to negative side so based on the kirchhoff's laws so it's a negative voltage and uh, since this is a series combination right the current has to be same in uh, you know any any series combination since there's no other branches right other no uh, other there's no other path to go uh, the current in the current to divide um, so the current has to be same in series combination so just i e times r1 is the from ohm's law voltage across r1 is just i times r1 so current will be same just we just keep it i as i uh, same thing uh, for r2 the voltage across r2 uh, r2 is uh, again negative i times r2 why negative because you are going from positive to negative you are stepping down right uh, so your electric potential decreases based on the rule and this is zero so one thing note i current is common same uh, in series combination okay okay now E is now I R1 plus I R2, right? And E I is you can factor out I is same R1 plus R2 and divide both sides by I, right? After that, so this E over I is the total voltage divided by total resistance. This is the equivalent resistance, or you can call total resistance, total or equivalent resistance. It just here this side will be just R1 plus R2, right? So this is the result we got. So when you combine two resistors in series like that, the equivalent resistance, the total resistance will be just the sum, sum of the resistors. I don't have to. So and then you can say in general, in general you can say R equivalent or R total in any any series combination is just R1 plus R2 plus. Just add them, you know, uh, right, up to n number of resistors. So that's your uh, common formula. Just add them to find the total equivalent resistance. So here's an example of uh, a series combination of uh, two electrical bulbs. So these two electrical bulbs are can be considered as uh, you know two resistors. So uh, so here's an example of two. Uh, identical bulbs you know in connected in series so other examples are the Christmas this tree deco lights are you know connected in series so as you can see all these little uh, lights are connected in series and there uh, may be one problem actually because if um, if you remove one bulb the entire circuit uh, string of lights goes out and to fix this problem um, a shunt is provided a, 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 a path called you know connection called shunt uh, in, in the bulb provides the conducting path even if the filament breaks that fix the problem so the uh, next second type of combination of register is called parallel combination of registers so par parallel combination is something like that if you connect two registers in parallel like this so we like to find out what's the uh, total effective resistance you know total equivalent resistance of this you know so the next combination of register is the parallel combination so if you combine two registers say r1 resistance and r2 resistance if you combine like this r1 r2 and then uh, to supply the current you have to connect it to the battery like that right if you combine something like this right these two registers are said to be in, in parallel right uh, so then here's the thing so the battery has emf right the battery has a voltage of e emf and this is the total current now the total current will divide here right because you have the branch it will find the branch two branches right so the current through r1 let's say i1 the current through r2 let's call r2 but since uh, both r1 and r2 uh, are actually connected side by side like that they get exactly the same voltage the voltage across R, uh, r1 and r2 are exactly the same current is different right so that's the main point the voltage in parallel combination voltage across 
the registers are same but current is different through them that's the key point so then from the Kirchhoff's current law you can say this at this junction right at this junction so that this current divides into two i1 you can say i1 uh, plus i2 has to be i right this total current through the battery here has to divide into two right from Kirchhoff's current law uh, <clears throat> but here i1 is uh, but remember the voltage across the voltage across the uh, the voltage across the register is same so i1 from ohm's law is the voltage across this both registers is uh, the voltage across the battery voltage of the battery divided by r1 the voltage across the register is same right like that so then i is the the battery voltage right which is e we can factor them out like this and divide both side by e right you get this and what is this so this is the total current divided by total uh, voltage right so it's the inverse of resistance so this is the total resistance this is the right 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 right so what is that so because since r total is e total voltage over total current 1 over r total has to be inverse right that's what will be used and if you do some algebra so you can say r total right because we're going to find the total resistance right anyway so one over r1 plus one over r2 and inverse reciprocal of that right that that calculates the total equivalent resistance in in parallel combination and again in in general you can say in any if you combine uh, any given registers n number of uh, registers in parallel the total resistance will be just given by this just this by this parallel combination formula and so on but don't forget to do the negative one is reciprocal right so that's the general formula uh, to find the total equivalent resistance when you combine uh, the registers in, in parallel an example of uh, uh, you know two electrical bulbs uh, connected in parallel so just like uh, the example the practical examples uh, example is the <clears throat> automobile headlights you know the automobile headlights are always connected in parallel parallel not in series because the parallel wiring allows both bulbs getting the independent powers you know from the battery so even if uh, you lose one bulb um, it, it will not affect the other you know it's required for safety so here's an example you know. uh, and uh, so here's an example of trick of making the circuit simpler. So before you actually apply the mathematics, you know, if you have, um, you know, uh, if you want to simplify the circuit, so you simplify one at a time. So for example, if you are given this circuit like, like this, what would be the effective resistance of the circuit? So first, the best way to simplify is first uh, find uh, the effective resistance of these two registers. In, these are in parallel, which is this, right? and then after that then you can clearly see these three registers in series and the whole these three registers can be just replaced by uh, you know this uh, single register and then you can just apply ohm's law to solve voltage and current through the given circuit right that's how you simplify you always simplify one at a time you know um, <clears throat> So next is uh, similar to register combination. We can also combine, you know, uh, capacitors in uh, series and parallel combination. So first, let's find out uh, the combined capacitance formula for series combination. So these are the, uh, let's say you have two capacitors whose capacitances are C1 and C2 are the capacitance of these capacitors and combine in, in series like this and you connect it to the battery to charge them. The, the most important part is here is when you combine two capacitors in uh, you know uh, in series no matter what capacitance they have they, they will store equal charge when when you connect them in series and this is because of induction because of induction electrical induction they must develop or they must um, you know store same amount of charge 
so if q charge develop here this will in induce equal and opposite charge here and this will induce equal and opposite charge here so charge will be same in in, in steady combination and then from kirchhoff's law right again kirchhoff's law says uh, it's a v1 plus v2 right so total voltage has to be voltage across the capacitor uh, c1 voltage across the capacitor c2 right so that's an you know, e is a v1 so what's the relationship between charge voltage and capacitance in capacitor so from our previous chapter we know q is cv right or q is cv right q is the charge c is the capacitance v is the voltage so then uh, v is q over c right so using that here q q is same for both so charge divided by c1 and for second capacitor is charge divided by c2 and then q is common factor 1 over c1 plus 1 over c2 right so divide both sides by q 1 over c1 plus 1 over c2 and if you see this relation again uh, q over voltage the voltage uh, voltage divided by charge is inverse of the capacitance so this has to be the equivalent capacitance so it's just opposite from you know op opposite compared to the uh, register combination so don't get confused so uh, so the, here's the conclusion so if you combine right many capacitances capacitors in in series the equivalent capacitance right is given by this okay just opposite to the register combination right it's exactly opposite to register combination So you can clearly see, right, uh, you can say if you combine capacitors in, in series, it will decrease the total equivalent capacitance because it has an inverse relation. So total capacitance will decrease actually if you combine them in series. And here's how you find the equivalent capacitance. So here's the uh, par parallel combination of the two capacitors, right, and then we like to find the equivalent capacitance of the capacitor. So here, um, uh, when you combine two capacitors in parallel, one thing to note that the voltage across the capacitor is same, right? Um, same for both, which is the battery voltage. Okay. So in this case, right, uh, because they are connected across the same battery, same polarity. So the voltage across the capacitors are same, but charge will be different now. Depending on the capacitances, charge will be different. So you can say the total charge stored on them both is Q1 plus Q2, right? Conservation of charge. The total charge for both has to be Q1 plus Q2. But Q1 is C1 times V is same, right? Which is E, which is the battery voltage. Plus C2 into E. E is the EMF of the battery. So then C1 plus C2, right? And because you can factor out the battery voltage, right? And Q divide both sides by divide both sides by the battery voltage and q over voltage this is because q is cv q over uh, v it has to be capacitance so this is total charge divided by total voltage has to be the total uh, equivalent capacitance so you can obviously see is uh, uh, is exactly opposite to the register combination so if you combine uh, two capacitors in parallel it will increase right it will increase the total capacitance and in general, you can say the equivalent capacitance, if you combine more than two, right, you can generalize like this. So total equivalent capacitance increases, actually, if you combine them in, 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 in parallel, right. So uh, finally, um, as a last topic, uh, uh, we're going to do RC circuit. So this is about charging and discharging of a capacitor. <clears throat> as you know, charge. A capacitor can be charged, you know, by connect just just by connecting a battery. Uh, but uh, in uh, reality, actually, a capacitor is charged <coughs> uh, by placing a register in in series, uh, just to limit the current, you know, for safety. So this um, whole circuit actually uh, represents the charging and discharging um, <coughs> of a capacitor, you know. Because uh, the main point here is this is called two-way key, two-way switch. <clears throat> so to charge a capacitor, you know, you have to uh, throw that key to uh, throw that switch to uh, position A, right? 
and then it will now connect to the battery right here's the battery uh, the battery is connected here right uh, through the register right uh, and the capacitor will be charged um, and uh, it will it, it happens exponentially uh, and uh, you know the uh, this is the voltage across the capacitor right and this is the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time and it increases exponentially with time and at the same time the current however decreases exponentially with time and that's how it behaves the charging and discharging behaves exponentially and we can so we'll have to use some differential equations to prove the mathematics of that which we are not gonna deal with you know but this this is this is the formula this is the charge across the capacitor as a function of time which you can clearly see increases exponentially and this is the voltage relationship and this is the current relationship okay. so <clears throat> uh, this constant here uh, r times c product is a very important you know time scale in charging and discharging our circuit it's called time constant okay it's a constant time scale you know it's a scale time scale which is constant for the given particular circuit uh, it depends on various quantities it depends on the components you use it's a time it's called time constant which actually basically controls uh, the uh, time to charge the capacitor uh, how fast and how slow you can charge a capacitor or discharge the capacitor depends on this time scale we call time constant okay and um, so let's define quantitatively so let's begin with this equation this is the equation we derive we can derive you know using differential equations you know using calculus and just play with this you know um, we want to find the time where um, you know uh, <clears throat> a time constant so we want to find so just replace small t with the big t remember big t is time constant rc right so if you do that and you can clearly see uh, 63 percent so you can define time constant as the time for a capacitor to charge by 63 percent of the full charge okay so that's how we define the time constant so similarly you can now discharge once the capacitor is fully charged you can discharge it now remember this uh, two-way switch the two-way switch now uh, needs to be connected uh, to the position b and then it will disconnect it will then isolate the battery right it will isolate the battery and then the, the charge capacitor will be discharged now this is the path right the, the charge or energy will be discharged through this register which uh, <clears throat> obviously goes uh, as a heat dissipation and this is how you discharge the voltage across the capacitor decreases you know exponentially with time and obviously the charge and current also decreases exponentially with time and these are the formulas this is how current this decreases this is how voltage decreases this is how charge dissipates you know exponentially with time so this is a summary so you can clearly see the, the, when you charge a capacitor it charges you know exponentially the voltage across the capacitor increases exponentially with time and finally it becomes equal to the voltage of the battery finally it becomes flying if you discharge again it will happen exponentially and this is the time constant this is one tau or two tau this is the time constant it's a constant time scale uh, you know so so from here to at one t right at one time constant the, the voltage has increased by 63 uh, percent again uh, uh, it will take another one time constant to go from here to here second right second time constant again uh, from here to here it will take another time constant and so on okay and rc circuit has many applications you know in real life uh, so <clears throat> so in a flash system it's, the capacitor is charged through a, um, you know register is basically rc circuit you know and this flashing light actually also uh, charging and discharging depends on charging and discharging behavior you know and this frequency can be controlled um, uh, just by you know, changing the RC value, time constant value, you know, the frequency of this windshield wiper can be controlled by changing the resistance in the circuit, you know, uh, to change the frequency of the wiper, you know, you, you are basically changing the resistance. So, and so electricity, even in electricity in nervous system, you know, the, the, our nervous system, <coughs> the basic building block of nervous system is, uh, you know, brain cells, you know, these neurons. And neurons just uh, turns on and off you know uh, there are billions of neurons that just turns on and off to uh, you know uh, figure out some uh, pattern 
uh, and that happens again this neurons turn and on and off just by using the RC model you know you can model them by RC charging and discharging model and then separately I will show you some numerical problems and here, here's some charging and discharging animation using the applet there's the charging and discharging <coughs> animation using this particular applet you know so here's the first of all during the charging uh, capacitor you know that, that's how voltage and current uh, uh, you know the voltage across the capacitor and voltage across the uh, register changes and you can clearly see this happens exponentially with time uh, this this is this represents uh, the pink color represents pink graph represents the voltage across the capacitor and the blue uh, data represents the voltage across the register and you can clearly see right the voltage across the capacitor is increasing exponentially with time uh, whereas the voltage across the uh, voltage across the uh, register is decreasing as a function of time you know and similarly uh, when you discharge the capacitor this will happen so voltage across the capacitor initially it was maximum right and it, it is is decreasing now see is decreasing exponentially similarly uh, the voltage now voltage across the register uh, also it was a negative maximum because it, the, when you try to discharge the capacitor the current direction of the current flips so that's why now voltage across the register is negative and again it decreases exponentially with time and finally when the capacitor is fully discharged and uh, the voltage across both of them will be um, exponentially becomes zero uh, 